Welcome to Get a Clue, the top six, or this side, the top six uh, games that you can find on Target online in time for, hopefully, in time for their sale that starts on Sunday, buy two, get one free. And this list is a top six uh, games over $30 that... I can attest to <laughs> my favorite six out of the ones I know that they have on online as of three days before the sale, two days before the sale, whenever. Um, what I, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm doing is I am going to tell you what they are. And if you missed out on the first two videos, there's a video that I created top 10 under $20 and a top 10 from 20 to $29. And today it's from 30 on up. And uh, let's check out these because I want you to have the opportunity of uh, deciding if one of these or two of these or three of these or a combination from these three different uh, lists are something that you would want for your family, for yourself, or as a gift at Christmas time never know. So let's start with these six. <laughs> six, whichever direction is best for y'all. Um, my choice. And so we'll start with number six. And number six is, you can tell I have an old box. I've had this for a few years. And because it started out being called Settlers of Catan, and now they have shortened the name to just Catan, okay? Uh, it has a whole lot of expansions. I do have the five six player expansion so that I, we can play it up to six players. This only is two to four players or really three to four players. Um, so you really, if you have any chance of going above that, you're gonna want the five to six um, person expansion, but you can start off really well with this, uh, especially if you're not needing five or six people. This is the base game, Catan. I, it's um, a tile laying game. <laughs> you create, every time you play, this board is going to look different. Different areas are gonna be in different places and different amounts are gonna be in different places. You collect cards so that you can build on the board. And uh, yeah, it's right side up. Um, and basically you're connect, you're making settlements and you're connecting them with roads and you're trying to get the longest road, um, all, all kinds of different ways, you know, the most points, the more, yeah, it's, it's really um, a classic now, obviously, because I've got one from Settlers of, Settlers of Catan. It has been around for decades. So if you haven't heard of it, um, it's been around for a while, a long while. Like, I think this one came out in 95. I think, if I'm not sure. Yep, 96. It says back here. So it's been around since at least 1996. That's, what, 25 years? So it's about time. If you haven't played this, if you don't have it, it's about time to get yourself this game. It is also considered a gateway game, a game that bridges from the mass production games, the mass the uh, mass market games of our youth, our youth, because it was my youth too. Uh, when I discovered this, when so many people discover this, they realize that there is a whole world out there of games that we have been kept from. And there are so many games that we have been kept from. This is my number six in the over $30 category, and it comes in at just under $36 on uh, Target Online this today. Today I checked 
and it was under $36. Uh, I, what I have done, in case you haven't seen my other videos, is I've rounded up. So every time I give you a price, it was someplace in the dollar range under that. It might have been 99 cents, <laughs> but it was under there because there were some that were like, you know, 27.16. And we're like, huh? Under 28. <laughs> my number five. Okay. We have a thing here. I don't own all of these games, at least not in the board version. And this is one of the ones that I don't own the board version. I have the, oh, my nose tickles. Um, I have the app version that I play a lot. And um, let me wait until it signs. Uh, yeah, here we go. They, there's proof. My number five is Sagrada. Sagrada. It plays one to four players if you have the actual board version. This, you can play solo, you can play local, you can play online. Um, but the, um, the board itself, let me go with um, local. S solo mode. Continue a game. Oh, I have a game started on here. So let's continue going so I can show you what it's like. Um, let's see, get it so that it's not reflecting so badly. Um, mm -hmm. It's not so good. There we go. I'll do it that way at an angle. Um, you choose dice, colored dice, and place them on your window. You're creating a stained glass window with colorful clear dye and um, <laughs> it's beautiful and I've seen it in real life and it's beautiful but because we're talking about over $30 games I have to kind of balance out uh, I can't just be buying them all even if I like it <laughs> uh, it's on my wish list and it's there but in the meantime, I know how to play it because I play it here and I play it reasonably often on my app. So I wanted to place it there because it is my number five of the over $30 games. And it comes in at just under $35. It comes with piles of dice. It plays up to four players. And in fact, you can play solo even with the board game. So be aware, but it's beautiful. It's colorful. It, the, the clear, uh, colorful dice just stand out, and, and, but it's a little thinky. You're trying to create patterns, or uh, every game will be different because you'll have different criteria. Uh, you'll get points in some cases if it's all different colors going down a column or all different colors going across on a row this way um, you'll get the sometimes you'll get extra points it for every three and four pair or every two, one and two pair or every five and six pair um, sometimes you get points if it's different numbers going down the column or different numbers going across the row I, there's so many different combinations and and it's just cards that show up at the very beginning of the game and so you know what you're trying to get so you roll the dice and then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to take this one and place it here. And then it's your partner's return, and they take one and place it on theirs. And you're working from the same dice. So, yeah, it's a wonderful game, and I really, truly uh, suggest that it's, it's a really good game. And it's not a difficult one, and it's a fun one, and it's a beautiful one. My number four, um, the truth is... Most of the, my, my, basically my top six are almost all what I would call reasonably classic games. And so my number four is the original Pandemic. I have several Pandemics. Um, and the truth is, I really like Pandemic Hot Zone North America. But this is the one that got me started. Pandemic, the original it came out years ago, uh, 
published in 1990, uh, no, sorry, um, 2013. Okay, so it wasn't this pandemic that we've been going through <clears throat> that set it up. It has won all sorts of awards. It is a very well-known game these days. Pandemic is considered a, a modern classic. And because of that, there are so many other pandemic versions out. Uh, <clears throat> all sorts of them. So many, too many to get confused with. Some are much harder than others. This is a basic. That's why I say pandemic, the original. This artwork, this picture, pandemic, not pandemic, fall of Rome, not pandemic, rise, rising waters, rising something. Mm. I, all of those different, this is the basic. And this is the one I suggest. It comes in at just under $36. It plays two to four. In fact, <clears throat> yeah, plays two, plays two to four players. It's a cooperative game. I, if you watch the Get a Clue for Pandemic Hot Zone North America, you'll get a feel about this because this, it plays like the base game, okay? Except smaller. This pandemic, the original pandemic goes across the world. And so you have cities from all over, major cities in all over the world, which, um, it's kind of maybe a little helpful in learning a little bit of geography if you're working on that. Uh, but it is cooperative, which means it, everyone is working together. Everyone is playing together to beat the game. And the game is trying to cause a, pan a worldwide pandemic. And you are trying to stop it. You're trying to cure the different diseases. There's four diseases that you're trying to cure. And that is the goal of the game. To cure, uh, come up with a, a, a cure for each, of the pand for each of the diseases. But to keep the diseases at bay in the meantime while you're working on a cure. Wonderful game. Um, it has some strategy and some thinking. No two games are alike, ever. And, but because it's cooperative, you work together with other people. And because it's cooperative, it can be played solo as well. Because you can cooperate with yourself. So my number four is the original Pandemic. My number three is another crossover. It, 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 Catan is a crossover um modern classic game and so is Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride North America is a Spiel des Jahres winner which is the big award gaming award in Germany that comes out every year and in 2004 this won it. So this is at least 17 years old because that year is the year that um it won that award and probably came out a year before that because the Spiel des Jahres comes out, it, the awards go to games that are in German. And sometimes the German copy, German version comes out after the English one. More often, the English one comes out after the German one. But Ticket to Ride North America, uh, in fact, it doesn't even say it. That's how old my copy is. Uh, it's just assumed to be because they didn't have uh, the other ones yet and there are piles of Ticket to Rides. Um, this one is the base, the original game. And I'm going to be talking about one of the others in the honorable mentions at the end of this uh, video. But this is, what you're doing is you're creating links from one city to another city in North America and putting down your trains on your track to, to clinch that they are yours and you are solving uh, cards that give you points for getting your trains from one city to another, whether it's close by or whether it's across country. 
they, many more points if it's one of the long ones <clears throat> than the short ones. But you're linking cities with trains. You're collecting cards like three yellow cards let you lay down three yellow trains. I mean, well, no, actually three of your trains on a yellow track. It's very simple. It's easy to learn, easy to play. This is my number three over $30 game. And it comes in at just under $36. I'm, I'm kind of saying that a lot. Number six. Number four and number three were all under $36, and number five was under $35. So we're getting there. Now, number two is one that I also don't own right now. Well, I do own it because it's on its way, and sometime this coming week I'm supposed to receive it. I'm anxiously waiting. I've been waiting for it to be available to purchase uh, again because it was available last Christmas, but then it, since it's Christmas themed, it was not. And um, in one of my previous videos, I mentioned uh, it's young sister, brother, whatever, the um, Patchwork Express. And what I have down as number two is Patchwork Christmas. I love the Patchwork game. And I'm looking forward to having the one with all the Christmas colors of material, patchworks, with, you know, stars and things like that on it. Um, it'll be a little bit longer game, so I will have one of the Express, the shorter games, and one of the longer versions. Basically, all the patchworks are the same. <laughs> Basically, they're the same. Um, they even have the same shape pa patches. Uh, there is the original one, and then there's an Americana one, and then they came out with the Express one, which is a little bit smaller, and then they came out with the Christmas one, and just last month they came out with the Halloween color version. And um, I have been wanting the patchwork Christmas one and so uh, it was I, I bought it from a different place because I did not it, they did not have it on um, uh, Target online even a week ago it's very recently back in um, availability and so you have the opportunity of getting it I love patchwork it's polyamino tiles Tetris shaped tiles that you you buy uh, with buttons. <laughs> buttons is the currency. You buy them with the buttons and then you place that piece on your quilt. And you're trying to fill your quilt and end up with the most buttons and your quilt completely covered. That's the game. You pick, you, you have two things you can do. You can buy a tile, a patchwork tile, and place it on your quilt, or you can jump ahead on the track, uh, the time track, and collect buttons. That's it. Uh, it's very simple, but um, elegant. The The man who, uh, the designer of the game, you, um, Uwe Rosenberg, uh, has done some incredibly big, thinky games that scare me. <laughs> they are so big and thinky. Yet, Patchwork, and in this case, Patchwork Christmas specifically, is such a simple, elegant game. It's easy to learn and to pick up, yet... Little by little, the more you play it, the more you start strategizing and recognizing where you want to go with what you have available. Wonderful game, and even better, it is the cheapest one on my list. It, it comes in at just under $30. So yes, technically, 
it, yeah, it's probably $29.99. So it is in the $30 up range, but it is spot on, spot on. A wonderful game, love it. Very simple to play, very easy. And number one, my favorite out of all the ones that are available on Target online games, $30 and up, is the classic Azul. Again, another modern classic. Um, I'm all about modern classics. <laughs> I believe this one came out in 2017, I think. Um, and then another one came out, it is so popular. Again, that's the sign of a good game, it is so popular. <clears throat> that they came out with Azul Stained Glass and Azul um, Summer Pavilion. And just last month came out with Azul Queen's Garden, I think was the fourth one that just came out last month. So it's almost one a year, <laughs> almost one a year since this came out because it is so cool. It is beautiful. You have these plastic tiles. It is a wonderful game. Um, let me check my lists here to see if I have done, uh, yes, I have done a video oops, on it in my Get a Clue Casual Gamer. I have done a video on Azul. So I invite you to go and check it out and get more about what's what's all this and if you don't haven't watched any of my get a clue videos um, it's C for components L for length of play U for uniqueness of game and E how easy is it to learn play teach how easy is it to find how easy it is on your pocketbook and getting to the pocketbooks part this comes in at just under $32 in fact my top two choices are the two cheapest on this list. Azul and Patchwork. Patchwork, uh, you know, for you, you know, you can choose Patchwork Christmas if that's the theme you want, but you can choose the original, you can choose the Americana, the Express, or even the Halloween version. Um, they run different prices depending on how popular they are but they play the same. They all play the same. So get whichever one you prefer. I just have the Christmas one on my list. Now, I always like to end these videos with three honorable mentions and explain why they didn't make it onto my top list. And so to begin, I'm going to go with, uh, actually I'm gonna go with A, which is, Tiny Towns in Not a Tiny Box. <laughs> tiny Towns, you are creating a small town, a tiny town. Each person is doing their own. The reason this is, is not on my list yet is I've only managed to play it two times and both times were solo. So I really don't know how it will play with other people and I didn't feel it was something I should, um, I, I could honestly speak out. Now, the two times I played it, the first time I, I, I did well, and the second time I didn't do as well. But um, I was getting the, the idea of how to play it, and, um, and it was interesting. It's think, it looks very simple. You're just collecting, uh, resources so that you can create these buildings and place them in your town and trying to get it as full as possible filling in um you, you, for a final uh count of points but some buildings will give you points depending on what's next to it or what else is in your town and so it can get thinky um but it's cute and it's it really is not hard to pick up, but it is a little thinky, and I've only played it twice solo and not with other people, so I haven't 
I, I, I kind of put it in honorable mention, and currently you can get it for thirty for just under thirty eight dollars on Target online. So it is available and it's there. And my B is another one I do not own because it would be Ticket to Ride Europe. And the reason why it's not this is a, the North America. This is U.S. Uh, or North America. Um, the Europe one is. Honorably mentioned, first of all, if you have one, you don't need both. They're very similar, except Europe is a little tougher, a little harder. It has tunnels and ferries and bridges, whereas the U.S. one or the North America one, whatever you want to call this one, um, is straight, just laying down tracks, you know, getting your train from one city to the other. And in Ticket to Ride Europe, you're getting from city to city, the same thing, but sometimes you have to go through the Alps through a tunnel. Sometimes you have to take the ferry to England. Yeah, it's like all these different things that make it a little bit more complicated. So it's an excellent game. Um, and if you're in Europe and you prefer Europe, go for it. It's an excellent game. Right now, it is going for just under $37 on the Target Online USA. And then my third honorable mention is Santorini, which is a new game, newish game, newish game. And people love this with one caveat. If you like chessy type games, Hear me? If you like games like chess, this is a lighter version, but people who like chessy type games like, in fact, love Santorini. I got Santorini because so many people loved it, and I got it at an extremely low price at a second type play store. And um, so I picked it up and played it a couple times. And I have come to realize I do not like chessy type games. <laughs> I do not like chess like games. It, it, they just don't do anything for me. It's a beautiful game. I mean, it is so cool. And you can even hear the plastic pieces move. You're building these Houses in Santorini, the Greek island of Santorini, on this board is just, you know, five by five, and you're putting three stories and a top onto these buildings, and, um, and that's the basic game. Of course, there are rules <laughs> that make it very strategic and um, very chessy. You know, you, you put it here and then this piece can only move this way and that. And so if you or somebody you love likes chess type games, Santorini is a good game for them. Uh, and it's currently the most expensive one on this um, list, it, which is another reason why it's on honorable mention. And it comes in at just under $40. So... It's the most expensive, but it is, for people who like chess type things, an excellent game. So there you have it, my top six. I hope it gives you some ideas. And don't forget, Sunday, November 7th, 2021, United States, Target Online. <laughs> A lot of caveat. They begin a sale of buy two, get one free in toys, and get and they consider games toys. And so here's a few more to choose from. If you haven't checked out the other videos, check them out. They're actually cheaper games and longer lists. So happy gaming. God bless. And until the next time, bye.